So in the introduction where we looked at what to buy and how to kick yourself out, if you remember, I said that the palette that you actually need is quite simple. You need two yellows, two reds, two blues, and then your earth colours. If you notice, I haven't mentioned white and I haven't mentioned black. And the reason for that is with watercolour, your white is the paper. So I've just made a little start here to show you, you can use it densely. So it creates quite a strong, quite a definite line. But if you notice this still, it still moves. But then you can tease that out, gradually adding more water. And your tones, as we tease that out, if you notice there are, there are no brush marks, it's the, it's the pigment travels in the water and that creates your, your tone, uh, a deep tone or a light tone. So with watercolour, you work from your light tones and by overlapping, you come to your deeper tones. Um, let me see if I can show you. There. If you're not using it properly, can you see how that creates lines? If that happens, use a bit more water and soften it down. Can you see the difference? And you can lift it off. If it's too thick or too heavy, you can actually lift it off. Can you see that you've got you've got a real ability to change the uh, density on the paper um, so what I suggest you do to start with don't worry about what colors you use just go for one you like and maybe just have a practice at what colors mix together make what and just get used to using the paint so that the water does the work for you. Um, I'm using a size 10 brush, which I think is a, is, it's a good standard size. The world we're living in, people tend to want to make it uniform so that it's a bit more like this, the same color all the way through. Whereas the joy of watercolor is really the, the softness of the, the medium. So what I suggest you do is just play and get used to the paint moving on the page. I think people are often quite frightened by the water, by the amount of water, um, but it will allow you to work in shape. Can you see that, how it's very easy to work in an area of shape? So I think at this stage, yeah, just play, see, can you see how, if you've got it thin enough, you can work over the top and you create a third color underneath. So that there's an interplay. Can you see, see that? That's just using two colors just mixed together. Uh, but because I'm, changing the density of the paint and I'm starting now to be able to work over the top 
of what I've already done. It changes the the way the paint works on the page. So with watercolour, what you tend to do is start light, feel your way in, and then where you want access, you create a denser paint. And this is really what I would suggest you do for your first step is don't worry about the colours, we're going to come on to that, but just get used to using the paint correctly, really, for watercolour. And if you're someone who is used to working in acrylics or something like that, um, just get used to allowing the water to take the paint forward for you. Now you can see there, I've put a stronger colour down, but it's not making a scratchy mark. You can actually hear when you're doing it wrong because the paint kind of scratches on the surface. So it's not that you can't do dense colour, you can, but you still need the water to do the work for you and carry the paint across the surface. And that really is your step one um, to begin with. Just practice, see what happens when you add a layer on top. Don't think about trying to paint anything necessarily at this point. Just go and see what textures and what tones you create very, very simply and you build it up. A lot of people don't spend enough time on this step, uh, but it is the knack of watercolour. Watercolour has a lovely uh, transparency to it. And if you work too much over the top, you lose that too quickly. Um, whereas if you build it up in layers, in soft layers, you get more depth and it gives you more versatility as well.